Hi, we're Maddie and Nico, and we are turning this empty cargo van into this tiny home on wheels. We have no building experience, but we'll take you along each step as we transform our 2020 Ford Transit van. In today's video, we go over our last bit of electrical, which covers our DC to DC charger, our MPPT solar charge controller, and our 12 volt distribution panel. If you haven't watched part one or part two, you can watch both of those plus this video and learn how to DIY your entire electrical system. If you have any questions, comments, or anything to say, please comment down below, give this video a like, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So here is our Renergy 40 amp DC to DC charger. There are two parts to this job when installing this. You have the wiring that you see here. Then you have the second part that goes to the starter battery of the car, plus a breaker and a signal wire. I just wanted to give you a rundown of what you're seeing here. When you're looking at this, you have the right side, which is the input. So if you watched our pre-wiring video, you saw us run four gauge wire all the way up to the driver's side seat, which is where the starter battery lives. So these are actually connected to the starter battery, but I will show you that later. On the left hand side, you have your output and then the output goes from there and then it gets wired to our Lynx distributor over here. And as you can see, that is fused. This is a 50 amp fuse that is recommended by the manual of Renergy. So lastly, on the left hand side, you can see this wire. It's called a D plus wire. This is basically going to tell this charger that the engine is on this can turn on and start converting energy into our house batteries. It won't work without this, so I will show you how to wire that up as well. That's one of the more tricky parts of this job, but I have it all documented in this video, so stay tuned. One of the last things we need to do to our van is hook up our DC to DC to the battery and put the D plus signal in. We have to take out the front seat, so that's step number one. We have a 60 amp breaker that is going to act as our switch as well because it has a test and reset this is your ccp customer connection point and that's how we're going to power our dc to dc so i'm going to mount this right here just via some sheet metal screws and then we'll go to the next step Now that this is mounted, I now need to connect our DC DC positive to the auxiliary, and then I need to make a new cord that goes from our battery side of our breaker to the CCP. So now I have my breaker now attached to the CCP. And then the next step is gonna be routing our negative wire just to the negative terminal of our battery. You can also just ground this wire, but I don't have an easy way to get to the body of the vehicle from here. So we're just gonna stick it here. So yeah, I just gotta crimp a lug onto this and heat shrink it just like I did all these. So the tricky part about the DC to DC charger is trying to get a positive 12 volt signal to the charger only when the engine's running. And a lot of people from what I've read do this via, I think it's called the C33E port and you can buy a specific harness that plugs right into it and then it has little pigtails coming off of it. And that's what we did. So it is right here down right there here's your battery box and right in the top right corner that top one here with all these wires coming out that's the harness i've already plugged it into the port and on the harness it labels the wires one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so number six is ignition 
we've read that you can just attach your D plus wire, which is this. And basically this number six wire is gonna send a positive 12 volt signal down our D plus to then turn on the alternator charger. So that's what I have here. I just have a wire lug connecting the two. Just got our D plus wire hooked up to the DC to DC charger. We turn on the van and it works. We set the settings for lithium. So make sure if you're doing this, whatever type of battery you have that you're charging, you'll need to flip the switches depending on what you got. Um, in our case, we have switches one and two off, three and four on and switch five off. So that's for lithium. So this is our solar breaker. Really not meant to be a breaker in this case. It's just gonna be a solar disconnect. So this breaker shouldn't actually trip ever. I don't actually have that much power going through it to make it trip. And that's the way we want it. If you're using the same one, there's a positive and negative sign on the top of this. And that's the input side. The bottom's the output. Since our solar wires are coming out of this side here and then they're gonna go up and to our MPPT. It's gonna make more sense for us to have the input side, which is usually the top, we're gonna have it on the bottom. So we're just gonna mount it upside down. This is the breaker that I was just talking about. I didn't mention. It was already in this breaker box. I put a link below for this as well. I've seen a lot of people use, there's a five-way one, but we found a two-way. You only need to fit a two pole breaker in there. We figured this would work and it does. So this comes off. The first thing I'm gonna do is drill through this so we can mount it. So that's where that will live. Then you take your breaker. It has these little clips. clips that you put it on this rail. You do the top side first and then the bottom side clips in like that. Like I said before, we're mounting it upside down. Clip it down like that. just to make sure they're good. Here we have our 40 amp MPPT from Renergy. It comes without these little tabs fixed to them. So we put those on as I found it to be easier to mount. For this MPPT, the PV inputs are on the very left hand side. So my positive goes here, negative goes here. I just strip my wires. So here we go. The wires that came with our solar kit are both black. You can use some red electrical tape or shrink wrap to mark the positive wire if you'd like. Next, we connected the wires to our Lynx Power In and fused them with a 40 amp fuse. Be sure to watch our electrical part one video to see how we modified the Lynx Power In to hold fuses. Okay, we're gonna test out our solar now. So, I think first we're gonna turn on the whole system. Good job. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was make sure this was set up for lithium ion. Go to the battery voltage, then you press this, which is select. And then lithium ion lights up down here. And now I'm choosing, it's a 12 volt system. So that's 12 volt. And then you can press enter. Volt. There's your lithium ion mm -hmm. flashing. 
So now it should be good. This is switched off, so I'm gonna flip it on. And I think this should show what we're getting from some, solar. Some stuff. Do it. Zero. Is there a battery to just lit up? I don't know, 94% charged. Boom. They're charging. We're getting amps. It's doing it. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> 1.7 amps. I'm about to start wiring our 12 volt distribution panel. It's gonna be a lot of stripping wires and then screwing them into this. So I'll time lapse this. First though, a little detail. We're gonna strip back eight inches of wire, which means I'm going all the way back here. And I'm carefully using an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, whatever you might call this. Okay, so this is my positive wire, which is gonna go to either of these terminals here. We just have a whole bunch of extra black eight gauge wire that came with our solar, so we're using that. Um, and I just put a little bit of red shrink wrap on here, just so we would know that this is positive. Perfect. And then our negative wire just goes to this distribution block here. Okay. And so now that's wired and we'll connect the other ends of the wire to our Lynx distributor. So we just got our 12 volt wires wired up and now they're on our Lynx distributor. So this has power. I just put in a 10 amp fuse right here for our lights and then we're going to test them. So I'm going to turn on our system. Power. Got power? Yeah. Okay. These are just for those lights, not those ones. So it is working properly, kitchen light, so which is great. And we got a three-way switch. We'll mount it once we have our cabinet in here. That's where those are going to be mounted. Hello from the future. This is the lessons learned section of our van video where we go over some of the lessons we learned during this process. This is our last electrical video in the series. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you saw in the video, we connected our DC to DC charger to what's called the CCP or customer connection point. That is for a Ford Transit. And we figured out that we could do that from reading the BEMM, which is the body and equipment mounting manual. 
The one we connected to supplies 60 amps. I think if you have the dual battery for the Ford Transit, there's another CCP, which is like 120 amps. So I guess you could mount it to that one too. But in our case, we had that 60 amp one. That being said, if you don't have a Ford Transit, I would look up what to do and where to mount it. It might just be that you mount it straight to the battery, um, but definitely look into that before you tackle this job. Okay, when we wired up our 12 volt loads, I was writing down what the loads were on the piece of white insulation that was left over. So that's just a little tip for you. There's also on the inside of the fuse panel, there is a place that you can write down the number of the loads, but this also just makes it easier where if you have that off and or your wires have been disconnected, they are still labeled. So you know which wire is going to your fan, your toilet, your fridge, etc. And one thing we didn't talk about in the video is sizing the fuse for that 12 volt distribution panel. And the way you do that is you just add up all the fuse sizes that you have in the panel and then you just kind of round up to a fuse size that is available. I don't remember our exact number we added up, but it was, let's say it was 55. So we rounded up to 60. So yeah, it's a 60 amp fuse. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't, be sure to check out our video where we go over our entire electrical system setup. We go over every single component and how they work together. It's a good idea to watch that if you are new to electrical and trying to figure out how you can do this in your own camper van. It is possible. We are not electricians and we were able to do this. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel and we will see you in the next video.